Hey, good evening and welcome. It is Monday night in the United Kingdom and uh, we're super excited to have uh, Samuel Kiran joining us um, from Holland. And uh, this is going to be an absolutely fascinating talk. Samuel, you are the youngest person we've ever had on our show and it's an absolute privilege to have you with us. We had a, Luna's been chatting backwards and forwards and, um, and she'll, she'll tell the story in a few moments about how, uh, how, how we met. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's Teo Van Dor. I'm the executive producer of Time of the Sixth Sun. In the window below is Nikki Luna Williams, who is the writer, the director, the creator of this amazing project that she's been working on for well over 14 years now, 11 years of it actually working on the project. And we've got the movie and we've got the docu-series that's available for free. I'll be putting the links up to that at the end of the uh, broadcast. Um, so yeah, we're just super excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. Over to you, Luna. Fantastic. My God, 14 years. That means, Hamuel, that I have been working on this almost your entire lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so I met uh, Hamuel recently, um, but um, you watched the series, our film and docu-series last year with your mum. And she wrote to me and we've kept in touch ever since. And it just felt when I met you the other day, I just had such a lovely heart feeling from you, Hamwell. And um, I just thought we all have so many friends who've got kids that really identify with a lot of what you've been saying. And I just think it's a great, uh, this is going to be a great teaching for a lot of parents, a lot of teachers and, and kids who maybe also feel different and want to understand it more. So... Shall we just start? I, I just want to say to everyone out there watching as we're waiting for people to come in um, that this is, uh, English is not Hanuel's and we're going to call him CK. It's not CK's first language, so bear with him. And he's also in the middle of making a film, which is highly stressful. He's had a very stressful day. <laughs> and should we just take a moment to breathe, you and me and Teo, and let's just tune in to each other, CK. Nice. So welcome to the show. Um, first of all, just tell us what your name is and what it means, Kamuan. So my name is Kamal Kiran, and I, uh, my name means uh, an angel of love and uh, the one who sees God. And yeah, that's, that's kind of, I'm living very much up to that name. So yeah. It's, it's a big name to live of, up to. Yes, I have. <laughs> I have noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, I might say Hamuel because I'm used to it, but for the ease of the audience, we'll call you CK, which you are often yeah. called, it's my like name. a nickname. So um, in listening to you, your, your parents knew from birth that you were different. And so I'm going to ask you to talk through some of the extra senses, for example, that you have like autodidactic and all of those things, the visual thinking, um, and we'll go through them one by one. So first of all, you're an HSP, and that is a highly sensitive person. So all your senses are highly developed, and and tell me how that affects you. So like you can be really assaulted by light, smells, colors. Tell us about it. Um, yes, I am high sensitive and I'm very, uh, everything is like heightened for me. So my senses, my, also my feelings are very high up there. So let's for say, um, we take a Christmas, um, market, for example, you'll have a lot of noise, a lot of smell, music, people going around, uh, people trying to buy stuff and uh, negotiating. And for a normal person, you would say that's quite normal. They're enjoying it. They're looking at all the stuff. But for somebody like me, I smell this, I hear that, I hear every single thing that's going on. And because I'm high sensitive, I also feel the energy around me that the people create. And sometimes that can be so much, I start hyperventilating and I start having troubles with it. And I needed to control that. So what I did was I focused only on one thing, and that was the smell, and it was the smell of cinnamon. So it's like a kind of focusing point to cancel out all the other stuff around me so I wouldn't notice. But it's very difficult for like 
a 10 year old to try that and yeah. for people who don't know that they have that too they, it will be very confusing and it's very very anxious and they get very nervous and that sometimes creates uh, anxiety in some cases yeah, so, yeah very, very overwhelming yes everything's very overwhelming every sound every noise every smell every uh kind of movement like when i'm laying in bed at night i sometimes hear the electric electricity going through the lines in the walls so that kind of gives you a little uh, example yeah. of how i feel and see and hear yeah i wanted to ask you about that about the electromagnetic waves and electronic devices so you say you can hear them do you experience it in any other way in your body because we're bombarded now by signals yes uh for example when i'm um uh, i always have normally i have my phone in my pocket but if you have a phone in a pocket normally you don't feel anything but as soon as i put my phone into my pocket i have pain i get pain in my knee and i get pressure on my upper leg because the electric magnetic field is pushing on it and i can sense that so and as soon as i take it out it goes away so i don't have any troubles with it so like electricity in my room that really affects my sleep pattern like batteries everything that has electricity in it or something that already has electricity or had electricity in it still can affect me on this kind of level wow so, that's a really good um i mean just that is a really good message to all of us you know the amount of people who carry a phone right by their heart or in their pocket where your reproductive organs are inches yes. away so uh, people who can't feel it like you do don't realize because they're not feeling it mm. uh, over time that creates sickness yeah and, uh, very and get, gets very heavy sickness so uh like cancer and, and stuff so it's very it's very serious for people even high sensitive but also people who are normal that these kind of things are uh dangerous and uh, can be dangerous in the long term yeah really and so we talked about your five senses like feeling touch your emotions your sight smell hearing what about your sixth sense do you get a sense of how that is affected so do you yes. have tell me about that i had a uh, i had a few experience with uh, uh the supernatural and uh, the sixth sense like for example before i came to film i uh, was hearing to very very uh, uh aggressive uh viking music and i was walking down the street and it was dark with my dog and normally i don't feel anything i just relax and everything but as soon as i walked down in the middle of the street i just felt everything coming together like a few hundred people were walking behind me and just following that music and picking up that energy that's kind of what i had and i sometimes also feel things in my room like when it's dark i could never sleep in the dark i always needed a little bit of light to see what's going on because it was completely dark i always felt like somebody was watching me or I was standing somebody in my room trying to talk or trying to to uh connect with me and i very as a child i found that very frightening but i always slept with the uh with the blinds up and with the light in my room and i still do that today because it's such i get such uh used to it and i always get scared when it's completely dark because i still feel that uh feel those connections and those entities in the room or around or use energy but yeah it, wow i remember when i was talking with the man who's um the narrator in our film and telling him you know how i felt really like i was holding this film and i felt very alone at times and he said oh no you're not alone you've got 688 beings with you right now <laughs> you're never alone <laughs> they're all working on the film with you so um yeah we probably are being that. watched a lot of the time yeah. a lot of the time we don't even know it or don't even feel it yeah, so, yeah um, very, you were saying you were listening to really loud um uh what did you just say viking sort of music it's, it's a sort of viking music it's uh i think it was sung in old norse and with the drums and the certain uh, instruments they use and the, the the song called the healing fountain and it's a very powerful and very very instrumental song with a lot of drums and a lot of singing and, and it, it, it gives you a sort of vibe and energy that when, mm -hmm. I, when I'm when I'm a bit a bit down or I don't feel that good, I put it up and it gives me a little bit of strength. Like ah, I can take everything yeah. on right now. 
at that time I felt good and I said, well, let's try it out and listen to it now. And I just felt like Jesus and just these entities just walking behind me and I was like, oh, I got chills. I got very warm. I got like, I, I wanted to go like, like and, and fight and battle because that, that just gave me that feeling of everybody just standing around me and watching me and, and yeah. tuning into that music. So, yeah. And you've got a re you were saying to me, you're absolutely fascinated with Norse mythology yes. and with the Vikings. And so tell us a little bit about that. What, uh, what, what, what attracted you to that? Do you think a past oh, life think, maybe? I was, uh, yes, that's every, I, uh, normally think that really often because I normally had nothing with Vikings and I uh, was like, oh yeah, Vikings, they did this and that. But at a certain point in my life where uh, it, got, uh, uh, it got a little bit difficult, I started, oh, I was in a game and I saw this Viking character and I was just inspired like how they looked and their jewelry and how they uh, acted and how they spoke. So I was like, oh, let's, let's get a little bit deeper in that uh, culture and that mythology. And I always love the uh, Marvel films with uh, Thor and all these uh, uh, yeah. godlike characters. And that also very inspired me to look it up and see what, what, what was their thing, what they did. And I just got inspired. I was like, wow, this culture, how they thought and what their, their thinking process was and what they did with the mythology and, and how it was put together. And I always was very interested. And I normally wear my Thor uh, uh, hammer, million around my neck. But sadly, it broke today while filming, so I couldn't wear it. Oh. <laughs> it it it's something that uh, feels like home. It feels like very close to me. Like I understand what 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 was happening in that time. I also watch series and movies and documentaries on it to get more knowledge and get a more yeah. idea of what they did. There are some great series at the moment, actually, with that sort yeah. of Norse mythology. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah excuse me, commenting on your looks, but you actually look very Thor-like. <laughs> Thank you very much. I actually, it was actually funny because a few weeks ago, I, the, the, uh, a guy at my judo said the exact same thing. Oh, you look a kind of like Thor. So yeah. I, I very like that comment. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you it's know, great. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, our very own Viking. So, um, Okay, so moving on to the next thing that you experience, you're also described as an HDP, which is a highly developed person. So yeah. how did that affect you at school? Because it must have been very difficult. And also, yeah. I wanted to ask if you intuitively know things that you've never been taught. You just somehow know things. So tell us what it's like to be an HDP. So an HDP is like you... Um... You walk into, you are living in a world with now people, adults, children, the same age as you. But for me, a lot of the times it feels like I'm a 16 year old in a world full of two year old toddlers. And I can go around and do things with them and I understand them, but they cannot come up to my level. So I very often feel alone. And in school, that was a very problematic thing. So I used very much adult words and I spoke very differently and I had different interests than the other kids. And uh, that was why I always got cast out as weird and I got bullied a lot. And it, and it took me to uh, later on in life to a very dark place where I never wanted to be again. Mm. And it, it, it made me very uncomfortable. Like, uh, I'm just, I'm, I can do about it. It's just, it's just me. I don't know what I did wrong. As a child, I was like, what did I do wrong? But it wasn't my fault. And it's like, it's like, it's so amazing because I love music. I love playing instruments. I love rhythm and I'm very into music and, and also the older music of uh, older generations. And uh, I, you can give me an instrument in my hand and give me a few minutes to an hour and I can play it pretty, pretty much all, almost completely. And I love information. I always need information to learn about new things, uh, learn how things develop, how the galaxy works, what, and eventually, if you do that enough and you get more interested, you eventually come to the question, but what is life? What, what is our reason that we live? So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of things and a lot of, yeah, things you get and, and you immediately do, but because of that, you normally get looked at as an outcast if you're not in the in a, a, a same uh, surroundings yeah. with the same things you have. So we're, you we're going to go, much. we'll go into that in more detail in a while. <clears throat> but um, 
yeah, that must have been, I can imagine that that sort of thinking is very different from other kids at school. Yeah. How did that, how did that feel, uh, CK, when, when you were in that environment as a, as a kid and when you have that understanding of more of what's going on spatially around you and you know, on an etheric level where you know the where other the other kids just don't get it where they just want to play is that is that is that in the end why you decided you'd, you'd come out from the school system it, that's also one of the reasons i uh can't get out of the school system but also uh another reason uh involving that and a uh, high uh developed uh, person is that i the school system isn't uh a program to it uh, um I forgot my line for a second. It's okay. They, the school system isn't programmed to uh, support these kind of children or these kind of yeah. thinking methods you have because you get to see a, a lot of uh, uh, images like, oh, we're going to talk about the farm today and there's a pig. But I think, oh, in McDonald's, what's, but let's say <laughs> in, a, in, a, uh, uh, in a restaurant, oh, they have very good, good uh, uh, pork there. But they also have a very fun, uh, fun uh, playground there. So I'll link those two together, and, and other kids said, "Oh, that's just the pig," and that what made me real di very differently from. Okay, I see things in my surroundings that others don't. I was like, to other to my friends, like, "You don't notice this? You don't have this?" And they just looked at me weird. I was like, "Oh yeah, it, it, it's probably me. That's not that, not yeah. right." So it, it it very much it was also one of the big reasons I uh, left school and was my parents' decision. Okay, now it's yeah. enough. He needs really somewhere where he's understood and uh, and uh, uh, completely uh, supported in these uh, uh, things that he yeah, has. Yeah. So on your flyer, we wrote that you were autodidactic, and I'd never actually heard of that word before. I had to look it up, but that means that you are better when you're teaching. You're self-taught. You're more comfortable yes. to self-teach yourself. Yes. So, so what sort of things, for example, now, how do you study? How do you teach yourself? So my, how I teach myself is normally I get an interest. Let's say a, a year ago, I picked up the old guitar from my father upstairs and it only had three strings on it. So like, well, I always wanted to play rock guitar as a child because I love Michael Jackson and I love the, the rhythm and the music and the electric guitar. And it was just amazing. And I was like, oh. Let's try to uh, play. Let's try to learn it. And in just uh, two days, I started playing songs on just one string that normally would take a few lessons or a few weeks before you got to the, the playing. And I very I pick up things very quickly. And like uh, the, the song Seven Nation Army, that's a very easy song. But I just like, hey, I know this song. And I started searching the notes on the guitar and I started playing them. I said, like, oh, it sounds like this. And eventually after just like 20 seconds, I could play the whole song without any trouble. And I really noticed that I'm the only one or let them, that I picked that so up quickly because a few of my friends tried this and it, it really took them like a few hours before they could play that piece. That yeah. I did in 40 seconds. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, I just picked that up so quickly that I was like, oh my God, I can do this. So <laughs> that's mostly how things start. And and I learn very quickly and I get to a very uh, amateur level of uh, doing stuff. And then it's also when you get very quickly bored because you learn so much stuff so quickly. You yeah. Like, oh, yeah. okay. I learned this. Oh, new thing. So you get very easily distracted when you're busy with something else. You want to do something else because you already know how to do it. And like, okay, I can do it the next thing. So yeah, it's, it's. So it's, how do you, uh, yeah. how do you decide? what topics you're going to learn or does your mom support you in that my mom and my father very much supported that as a child they were always very uh they i could do whatever i want with supervision of course like i really wanted uh um uh how do you call it um responsibility because a lot of but i see right now also that a lot of parents are like no no don't do that you'll get hurt or no no yeah. watch out and and be very protective over the child and and the child is like oh, i want to do this and experience that and my parents were like okay you can do this but just when we're there and in these kind of borders and those borders were very wide but they didn't of course they were concerned but they were like okay leave it he can do it like say i uh i wanted to uh i saw my dad always putting on the uh, the uh, chimney with a fire, I found it very interesting. 
So when I was six years, five years old, he taught me how to use an axe and make little wood parts to put into the, uh, into the uh, I wanted to say forge, but chimney. And when I was six years old, I could uh, go outside, chop the wood, bring it back in and uh, make my own fire when I was cold. And that gave me a sort of, uh, that's why my home is so important to me because it gave me that comfort of me allowing to do things and, and experience things and already pick up in the very early stages of my life to already pick out what I liked and what I could do and experience and experiment with that. So yeah. that's kind of how I pick that up. And I always have interest if I hear something new, like, oh, let, let's go and uh, check that out and go ahead and uh, try to understand it more so I can talk to, per to people about this because I want to be able to communicate as much with people as I want to can learn from that again. That they learn from that. Fantastic. I think your dad's a very clever man getting you to chop all the wood. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I really enjoyed that. And uh, my mom liked a warm fire, so I could do that very often. <laughs> nice. Good skill. Good skill to have. Yes. So another thing you talk about is that you are an image thinker. So now most curriculum uh, at school is mind thinking or word based learning. Yes. So for you, Explain to us how it is, because you see in images, is, which is what you were trying to describe before. So how, uh, talk us through on a daily basis, something simple, like let's say, let's use McDonald's yes. as an example, or a burger. So as soon as I walk into the McDonald's, you already have the high sensitive. So I smell this, the smell, the sound, I hear the uh, frying pan and everything. And as soon as I hear it and I focus on one thing, my brain in a few seconds just licks uh, all these links let's just say i see a uh, the happy meal and i think oh it's it's uh, uh, happy i think oh i was happy when i went to this uh, carnival where i saw it in this uh, rotating thing and uh, it's a meal i like food a lot and then um, what's normal food i eat it's like oh i eat normally this a mom prepares it like that and i can go on and on and on and, it's, <laughs> and that's happened in a few seconds i can already say okay this this that and so on and that's the fun thing with uh, also my teacher and my mom, they uh, kind of know how that works. So if I say this and I actually meant the other thing, they already know because I think so quickly ahead. They yeah. already know what I meant before because I react so quickly. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of what what happening. And then the smell, of course. And I think, oh, the frying pan, that smells like the one at home we have. And dad always takes the potatoes out of the bat of like this. So it's always a... Uh, a little game for me how much things can i do in this so much seconds and remember and link these things so i always practice that to get more better at it and get it more controlled so i don't go crazy it's something that i do i do that but with words so my brain is very overactive and i'll do word association and i'll i can go through 20 different things in a very short amount of time but that's exhausting that means your brain's very full and my, as a child, I, uh, my head was sometimes so much full, I, I, I uh, needed to get that out. So I was like screaming, let it out. And I was uh, screaming into the pillow just to get these thoughts. And it was so crammed up with all this information. And sometimes at school, I would go completely crazy. And I had to close my eyes, I plug my ears and go underneath a blanket and really tuck myself in so I felt nothing. I heard nothing, but it was only one thing I feel, felt, and that was the tight blanket around me that calmed me down. And right now, in, in, with my age, because my mom knew what was happening and in that the surrounding that I had, uh, I learned to control this. But if you go uh, and see other children who don't know they have this, or the parents don't recognize it, they get it, 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 get, it gets very hard. And it gets, you get very lonely and very frustrated with yourself by well, by far there's nothing wrong with you, but just you don't understand what's going on and it no. frustrates you more and it, and it keeps going and it doesn't stop and it can get very overwhelming at some time. But mm. it's, it's, it's all a, it's like, a, it's a curse, but also a very beautiful gift to have. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, you know, I've heard it talked about a lot, either from friends um, with their kids or from psychotherapists or whatever explaining how it is to be autistic or you know whichever labels they're talking about um, but it's great to hear it from the horse's mouth as it were 
from your mouth. Theo, do you identify with this, uh, with any of this, with your son? I do. I also identify it with it myself because, yeah. you know, I, I, I read this amazing book. I've mentioned this about three broadcasts ago by Gabor Mate called Scattered Minds. And it was when I was reading that book, it was all about um, attention deficit disorder. And uh, I was I was reading it because I was, you know, wanting to help my eldest son. And uh, I got about a third of the way through the book and I was like, I'm not reading this book for him. I'm reading this book for me because... I, you know, I have a similar thing. My my mind just goes so quickly and on so many different things. But I, I have to write things down. It sounds like you remember things, but so if I if I'm if I'm watching a talk, I will I'll have to write lists down so that I will remind myself later, because it's exactly it sounds very similar. That you know it's exactly what you said about you know the happy and the meal, and my brain will just go off and create all these you know, thoughts around whatever subject matter I'm watching to such an extent that I distract myself and I don't, and I'm often, I'm not listening to the person <laughs> that is actually talking. So actually doing this for me I've, is really hard. So, so to do these, to do these live broadcasts for me, because I have to really go inside to concentrate and listen to what the other person is saying, because you'll say something that will trigger my interest and then I'll be thinking about something else and that's fired something else and that's fired something else. So I'm absolutely loving to hear, you know, that, that that you do this, and I can see that my my son does this too, and um, uh, and interesting to hear about almost like the swaddling effect of the blanket, because I have a beautiful friend Mira who works very much with gifted children, and she says that's an amazing thing to do because it's almost like it just by by swaddling, you know, some babies love to be swaddled, some babies don't, but even in teenagers, you know, just that swaddling effect gives you that calming nature that then just grounds and brings everything and slows everything down because it focuses on one point and you can only feel that and nothing else that calms you down because oh rest this this calm and calm now i can i can think i can I'm, i can continue again so yeah it's, it's it's what a lot of uh what i always notice here with filming a lot of similar have uh, this uh quick thinking and i see a lot of them don't know how to uh cope with that and I was like talking to to a girl, and she was so interested. And we talked about about four hours, and it was like four o'clock in the evening already. So we're talking. So it 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 it's it's getting more and more uh more and more people getting it, and more and more children are yeah. born with it. So it's like when people understand it, they feel understand it too. So it's like okay, I'm not alone in this. So yeah. And Teo was saying about he has to write lists all the time to remember. But you were talking to me also about your memory and not being able to remember many things. So some things like a Rubik's cube, cube I believe you have 33. I have 33 <laughs> different ones of them, yes. And you can do them in like around two minutes? I can do every, uh, I can do the normal one in about 20 seconds, average. That was a few years ago, and I can do the other ones around two or two, two to four minutes because I was very interested in this. That's amazing. And yet your memory, if you're having to learn something in class, you maybe know something when you're four, but to remember it at age seven or something, you, you have no memory. Tell me yes, about that. It's, um, I have a very, very interesting story because I played trombone for a very long time. And it's a little, it's, it's the same thing because it's reoccurring every single week and every single day so what my mind does is oh we see this on average don't remember it because we don't we will need it you'll see it next week again so it doesn't completely store it in my brain and it doesn't mean i forget it completely normally i'm just like okay wait which note was i about to play which one is it and which position was it again and that's the same with learning like uh like uh three mile uh, three times three i'm like what was that again? How was that? And, and I need to think even now I said it, I forgot what it was because it was so regularly asked to me and I had to work with it regularly so often that my brain doesn't uh, completely uh, save it in, in, in the memory card. So it's, it's, it's very, it's very annoying. Sometimes it gets frustrating and you start to, uh, you start to really develop a, a, a annoyance and hatred towards the thing that's continuously bothering you and that's mm -hmm. what i have to that's what mm -hmm. i uh trying to cope with also right now when i'm getting yeah. learned to okay calm down they're just numbers and it will it will go from there you'll learn from there but yeah it's it gets but, very rough sometimes 
Yeah, and I guess as you get older and you mature more, <clears throat> that you're going to start finding coping strategies for all of these things. Yes. You'll find ways to deal with it so you're okay with it in the world. So um, is it like that when you're filming? <laughs> it's, it's, with the camera? It's, um, no, that's not. It's upon a very surprising that I didn't have that with the camera mm. because I was so focused and interested in how I needed to get the shot and I needed to get the sound right. And, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist at some time. So it was like, oh, I didn't like the tracking. Could we do it again? Or I was like thinking, oh, I didn't like the tracking that much. And the director says, okay, you know what? Let's do the, sh the shot again. I'm like, okay, and now I can do it perfectly. So it's like, uh, it's my interest that normally spikes the uh, storage capacity that I take things in. Because when I, when I uh, because I was younger, the, the numbers, I, I really started to develop hate for them. But because I didn't have a Rubik's Cube at a young age, I didn't get frustrated with it. And when I got it older, when I was older, I got it. I could cope with it better and save it on my memory card. And so when it's saved, I, I, I even, if you give me a Rubik's Cube right now, I could solve it under one minute just because I did it so much. And I yeah, had it yeah. remembered in my, uh, uh, in my uh, storage. So. Yeah, in your storage bank. And your mom was saying that being a visual thinker, for example, you might not be good with numbers, but if it's written in Roman numerals, you remember yes. it because it's a visual image. You see it as an image. Is that correct? Yes. Because I see yeah. it as an image because when you have a, uh, because the Romans are like, uh, you have an X and then a one behind it. I think it's a nine if I can remember correctly. Yeah. And then when I do it often enough, I think, oh, that number, the X and the, and the I, I see it as letters. Okay, that's, that's nine or that's, that's 11. So I remember it way quickly because it's an image and not a number. Because numbers, you can't, you can't, because if you put in uh, uh, something uh, with it, if you put something uh, like you have a three and you put one uh, on top of it, it becomes a four and it changes the number. But if you take Romans, you always know that the number yeah. that's the, the V is always a five. And anything that comes behind, you just have to add on top of that or uh, take it off so you'll so I'll get it very easily uh, 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 onto my memory card because I can remember it I can picture it in my head yeah. and numbers are just lines that are drawn in a similar way and I can store them with useful information so, so I, I guess then. I guess being in school and seeing everything in images that it must have been like hearing a different language almost and having to translate everything into pictures almost is, yes. is that a way of understanding it? It's like uh, learning your whole life English and uh, knowing only that English is there. And suddenly you have to uh, cope with Russian, but very quick Russian. You can relate to that like, like what, the, what, the, what, what? what is going on right now? It's like, <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's so confusing, every, everything that's going around you. So it's like, it, it gets frustrating. Like, ah, I can't understand. It's like, come on, just brain function. And you need to learn, yeah. like, in order to live in this world, you'll have to learn that Russian. Because if not, you'll never learn what they're saying. Yeah. And that's, and that's difficult. Yeah, yeah. And so at school, you, it, you really must, I mean, you talk about feeling like an outcast. You weren't the same as the other kids in the school. No. Um, and, and you talk about that thing of children need to fit in. They need to find their identity. Who am I? I'm this. I'm either a leader or I'm a follower or, you know, whatever it is. Do you want to just talk about that bit a bit, that feeling of being an outcast? And yeah. also when you were playing with your friends, they would make you the baddie if ever you played games. Yes. So not only were you the outcast, but you were also the baddie. Because I'm always the bad one, yes. In, in any uh, fantasy game, because as kids you play fantasy and you have the imagination. And I always had to play the bad guy, but I never, never wanted to play the bad guy because I had so much ideas for playing a good guy. And because I was physically also different, because I was almost always 15 centimeters taller, and I was a bit bigger kid and a bit uh, uh, heftier kid than the others, and I almost spoke different, I said things different, and we're like, oh yeah, let's just him play the bad guy because he'll be gone in the story after all. And I'd mm -hmm. play with him for 10 minutes, and then I would be... Uh, I would be off, I would be gone out of the game and I, they would outcast, outcast me and ignore me. So I would just go sit on the bench and just sit there and observe everything that's happening. And 
I could I was just sitting there and like you know, this I don't have anybody and my and one of my best friends he actually uh, was also scared of having this so he couldn't come to me because the other kid would outpass him too and this went on for a very long time and then uh, eventually it turned from one kid to three and from three to five and from five to 21 where I would be odd cast and, and, and yelled at and, and called very, very annoying and very bad names for just for being me. So that very much chiseled down my uh, self-worth and my self-trust. And it still affects me till this day that I have a very low trustworthy and I'm not very happy with myself, how I look or sometimes how I act or how I think about stuff. So for children to be in that environment of understanding is very important because that will help them later in life when they really need it. Mm -hmm. May I say that I think you're absolutely gorgeous and you're a total superhero. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you're turning that belief system around. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that right now. So. Yeah. Do you have anything to come in with, Theo? Oh, there's just so many people writing lovely things about, you know, what, a, what an amazing young man you are and, um, you know, wishing you luck and wishing you a remarkable evening and, you know, what a lovely job that you're parents have done with you and you know it's uh, and my my son is watching you now as well and so he's sitting upstairs in the bedroom with my wife and my, my both my sons are watching um so yeah lots of uh, lots of things and there was a question i'm just uh, i'm looking over here because i'm reading the comments um there was a question at 8 13 where is oh here this is a love your aunt here she says you are my angel or my viking so to speak so proud of you i love you to pieces your auntie <laughs> oh. Thank you. My, I, I really love my uh, my family. They're very, very supportive of uh, what I stand for and how I work. And they really try to understand me. So thank you, my Beautiful. whole family. And thank you, everyone watching and writing these lovely comments. Thank you very much. And um, let's go here. Maddie asked a question. She says, CK, do you have any siblings with the same qualities or do your parents have the same qualities as you? So I don't have any siblings. I'm a, uh, a single child. And my mother is the one with the most uh, developed uh, uh, symptoms or symptoms the developed uh, gifts that I have. My dad also has a, a, a it also is uh, connected to this world, but not as strongly as me and my mother. And uh, the only really sibling I have, or is my cousin, because I'm very close with her. And I had her. Uh, I was there when she was uh, uh, when she was. Uh, when she were birthed and I was there every single time and I lived with her for 12 weeks and we see her, I see her every single week and talk to her. And it's, it's, it was also a very difficult road for us to, to, because we didn't always understand each other and how we thought and how we think. And right now that made us so much stronger and in our relationship. So it feels more like a, like a, like a sister to me. Than like a actually sister. A cousin. Nice. Yes. So let's keep going with the questions about the gifts that you have. You're also ambidextrous and yes. ambidextrous uh, means you're both right and left handed. You can use both hands. And you were telling me that the brain works in a totally different way when you're ambidextrous. So can you explain that to us? How you. Yeah, first of all, that the ambidextrous. So the ambidextrous, it's like um, I can cut vegetables with my right hand. I can't do it with my left, but therefore I have to peel an egg with my left because I can't do it with my right. And that's kind of what's happening. And my mom has the same. She writes, uh, she cuts, she cuts with, uh, I think she cuts with her right hand vegetables, but she writes with her left hand. And that's kind of what's happening. So what's happening? Your brain is completely differently wired than all the others because normally you use any, any hand to uh, take something. Like, for example, you throw 10 times a ball at me. And sometimes I'll catch it with right, and sometimes I'll catch it with left. That's completely random on what I do. My brain is just like, oh, impulse left or impulse right. And it doesn't, okay. I just don't decide it. It goes naturally. So, yeah, that's kind of how ambidextrous works. So you can use both hands for everything, but not almost everything. But you have a preferred preference for which hand it can do it the best. So your, your instincts are like really, sorry, Taya, your instincts are really highly tuned then. Yes, um, it's like Sorry, as soon as something is, is, is happening, it's like, okay, I can do this or I can do that. And it's very quickly response. Like, let's say something, let's say a car is uh, coming at me. Okay, go, go to the left or to the right or just 
move our spine three out of the way. And it's like that ambidextrous comes in. So which one of that choose, chooses that? And that's how the brain works because it's like, I can do this, 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 or that. And it chooses immediately the safest or the best option in that case. And that's what, what also sometimes throws you off and doesn't make you sit down and look what's happening. And that's what I'm make learning great, right now. You make a great Jedi Knight. <laughs> <laughs> My, my son, um, he, he, he's the same. He's ambidextrous. And I, I was amazed to, to see that because um, he writes with his right hand, but he will play sports with his left hand. So, I, you know, I took him for a tennis lesson and I said to the coach, I said, he's, he's right handed. I said, but I just want you to see, you know, and by the end of the lesson, the guy was like, he can play sport off both hands, but he's just definitely with the ball. He's more dominant with his left than you know, and he kicks with his right, but he writes with his right hand. And so it's, a, it's the first time I'd ever, I'd, I'd come across the fact that your ambidextrous just people's brains are wired differently. So it's fascinating. I'm going to, I'm going to research that more. Thank you. And I guess what comes into that is when a child is dyslexic or an adult, uh, because it's like cross lateral thinking, you know how to spell something, but when it comes, the message goes down the hand, you've already started to write it backwards or Yes. differently it's kind of the same thing yeah. it's the same thing yeah but yeah. that's also a gift once you these things that are different about you once you start to really get on top of them and you can see the positive nature and how you can use that in the world you know what that's exactly what lorraine just said luna you're going to disappear so it's a bit long but she says the processing part of the brain and the working memory is weak when this happens it can't store information for you to access it the right way I have dyspraxia and Asperger's and relate to many of the things CK is referring to. School is like learning a forgiven language every day. I think that might be foreign language oh, every day. They're not geared up for the kids with these differences. I've come to learn that these are really gifts that we have. Totally agree. That's totally true. And I, I'm very lucky that my parents and uh, most of all, also my mom has uh, understanding for that and learned me how to use my gifts in the right way for not for me to do damage or be more uh, concerned about myself. And I can I can pretty much imagine for the kids who do not have a mom like me who understands them that way or a father or any kind of person, they get very confused and they just wanna, wanna know what's wrong with them, but there's nothing wrong with them. They just need a teacher to learn them what's actually, what's actually their gifts so they can use them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I guess a lot of young kids, I, I hate to use a, to say Generation Z, but that that ilk of kid born in that time space, time frame, um, I imagine a lot of them are maybe image thinkers and have a lot of these gifts. Um, I think it's more than we can imagine. I think it's probably hundreds of thousands of kids like that. Yes, it's, but the, yeah. There's coming more and more of, of, of me and of, of Theo and of, uh, of more kids. I always notice with the filming, there's a lot of same things who have, not all of them, but a couple of them. I notice they can't really know what to do with those. So they, they express it in different things and into their acting. And yeah. I really see that and pick that up. And I, I tried to talk to a few of them. And one of them was very open about it. So I could very good talk with, uh, with her. And, she kind of started understanding it more and and and, and um, that's kind of what I was trying to do to make children like me didn't understand themselves at first try to make aware of who they are what their gifts are and how they could use them to their advantage to live better with them and use them uh, as a, uh, um, a kind of superpower or a kind of gift they could use in everyday life to make it better and make it more fun and challenging every day yeah Beautiful. And just before we go on to looking more to future things, um, you, in your recording that you made, and if, just to explain to everyone, um, CK made a recording just to put down on tape, and he shared it with me, um, what he feels and what his experience is growing up. And I, I have to say, it was really emotional, CK, to listen to that. But you were talking very much about what it was like between the age of sort of five or seven, um, and for parents with younger children who are seemingly playing up, um, you actually got to a stage where the noise in your head was so strong and loud and all, everything you've described 
that you used to bang your head against the wall because it was the only way to, to, okay. you could make the sound stop. Yeah, to, to make the sound stop and just calm down, just just to take my brain a, a second to just rest. I always ask, please, God, just give me a second of rest so I can calm down and, and, and take in what's happening. And I've always prevented me from sleeping very long or, or uh, taking very long to get to sleep. And that eventually evolved to uh, taking me to a very dark place in combination of, of being on the standard school, of being very, very, a lot of, uh, very heavily bullied and of being always the bad guy and not getting any positive energy from my my like my comrades my my friends who i called friends because i didn't have anything else and my parents really saw that and they got got very very worried mm. it's um yeah i don't know what to say about that i just think it's uh, for people to get more and more of an understanding of this is really important and do you do you think sort of kids like yourself or really this generation of the last sort of 10 15 20 years are more evolved because you guys i think think more in a more lateral way than in a linear way Tay yeah. and i probably and i'm 20 years older than Tay, so we probably learned in very strict regulated ways but for you, do you think kids are evolving that fast now? Do you think that's what it is? Yes, because as I mentioned with the filming, I noticed a lot of um, like teenagers. Uh, 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 it's called I forgot the word. It was uh, a rhythm and uh, what was called? Uh, I forgot the I forgot the, the thing. Um, it's all right. Can I can I say it in Dutch tale, and you maybe can say it in, in English to me because I forgot the word. You can try. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, regelmaat. A, uh, CK, I'm really sorry. We, we only spoke Dutch at home until I was about five years old. Okay. So the only time oh. I can really remember Dutch is if I've had two two Heinekens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's a, uh, a certain rhythm, a certain uh, thing. We need the constant uh, yeah. thing. Of, okay, now we're going to sleep, now we're going to bed. And if that's too heavenly, we feel uh, controlled. And if it's too less, there will be chaos. What literally happened today, that there was a lot of stress and a lot of lot of uh, conflict between everyone and, and it just came out of nowhere. What's like the little, little bitty things that happens, oh, I got annoyed about this. And because it's a group, that energy molted over the few last yeah. few days we were together. So if one one got annoyed, the other one started to get more annoyed. And I saw that happening. I was like sitting there. Oh my God! What's going to happen now? And I was trying to, I was trying to calm things down and understand and take in what was happening. But I was like, just like pinned against the wall, like, what's happening right now? So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's very important that uh, uh, also uh, like parents with these children, and I noticed this that what my parents did set boundaries where I can work in, not too small, but also not too big, and you mm -hmm. have to kind of tap and and be careful how it's not careful, but kind of a test where you can put those so the kids can go freely and experience. And what I think what's wrong with the system right now is uh, the government and, and systems, they will all want to want to put labels and put everything in boxes so they can keep control and, 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 and supervise everything. But our generation doesn't work like this. We want to experience, take it in and then put it in our daily lives or use it to develop something or learn from it that way without being oh this is immediately that like the flower is like a yellow flower it's a yellow flower but if i look at it it's a no it's a flower that's standing in a field with no others around it how could that come and and, and i start looking at the flower and i see it doesn't develop any poles but to somebody just walking by it's just a yellow flower and that's what's happening with with more kids they start to get more aware and more curious of what's going around in their world and when they say, oh, that is that, and it isn't different, but they see something different, they get confused. And that's what these uh, boundaries are about, of going out and experiencing, experiencing things because they can learn them from themselves or they can get help by seeing or getting all these little details in, but they can, can put it into perspective and later on use that in their more teenage or adult lives even. 
You've had such amazing input from your mother, haven't you? Is she as what does your mother do as a job? A psych is she a uh, my mom is a, uh, a psychological therapy therapist on an energy based level. And uh, so I had growing up, I grew up with all these things and uh, different cultures like Buddha and Christianity, God and all the other stuff around it uh, that me learning that, uh, excuse me, that me seeing that um, all coming together and being in this world, I really learned from this and I implemented that in my own life, like, all right, this is how things go around here and this is how things really are. Because yeah. if you don't know, it's, as I told the girl what I was talking to, she didn't know much about it, but as soon as I started talking and explaining things, this whole new world started to go open. And yeah. for some people that can be very frightening and some people that can be very interesting. Mm. And you just have to know what to do and ease them into that. And I was very much confronted with that immediately. And I have very much learned from uh, all these things and from, from my mother most 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 of the time yes brilliant and you both sat down and watched the film together the film and the we, docuseries yeah. we both sat uh, together and watched it over uh, weeks uh, spend it out and sometimes i was like not understanding it completely because it was a little bit back and i didn't fully watch some some of them and then after a few months i came back and then i finally understand what they were doing but first of time yes i watched them with my mother and most of them i really watched and we also discussed afterwards about the subjects they had and I got all new ideas about things and, and it was it was very interesting to see that. It was very, very, very uh inform inform very informative. Informative. Yes. And so who was your I just this is just totally it's irrelevant, but it's out of interest. Who was your favorite speaker that you related to in the film? Do you remember? Uh there were Do so many like? were really related to, but who I really liked, I forgot his name. It's it's the Describe one who him. channels the one who channels the two uh, spirits. Yeah, the one who Jeffrey. was Vinci. Jeffrey, yes. Jeffrey uh, He was also one of my my favorites, and the the uh, the man who uh, I think it was the one who lived in the Grand Canyon. I really I really should remember. Ukwala. That. Ukwala, yes, he really Ukwala. Was, it was very interesting of how all these people were talking, and everyone I was like, oh. I finally felt when I was watching them, I, I was like, oh, I'm not alone in this world. And there are more people who understand this. And what I very much uh, 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 always uh, was it very felt was I was very alone in this subject and mm. because I didn't have many people, but more and more over the time of the last few months and weeks, more of these people started to come in my life and, 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 and teach me and I teaching them about the ways that, that we think and people think and the way actually uh, for us works. So yeah, that, that's kind of what it feels for me like. And yeah. those were all my favorite. And is it also because they speak like a heart language? It's like they're speaking to your heart and your soul? Yes, but it, it immediately feels like a connection, like, okay, I didn't even met this person, I never talked to them, but I still feel that connection of, oh, you fi somebody finally understands me and how I, how I feel and how I think. So yeah, it it it, it really was a, a hard spoken uh, language. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. I hope you're going to share it the link with all your friends. <laughs> I, I sent it already to a couple who uh, who know about this. So I I'm, after this, I'm going to send it to everyone. So send it to it. everyone. <laughs> I will do that. I've got a I've got a question here. I've got a question here from Georgina, and I think it would be lovely to help because. I remember when I, when uh, your mum will have had this, and I remember when I had this with my little one. She says, um, my four-year-old, I think, is very sensitive, sees things, have a hard time to calm down when he's overwhelmed. I try to calm him down, help him choose his words to express what he is, um, what he's feeling. And I don't think he'll be a good fit for regular school. What is your recommendation to me as his mum? So my recommendation is... Um... The thing is with with the kids like this they need a, a find an environment where they feel understand and they feel interested in the topics so i don't know specifically what your son is or uh, son, yeah, your son is uh knowing or, or feeling or uh, having but the most i think the most important part is to listen and try to understand and try to 
really research the things he's saying because there's a lot of information out there, a lot of information in books. So for you to try to research and try to understand your kid more, you can help him try him to understand himself better. So that's kind of the recommendation. Also, a regular school, if he's that already that sensitive at a young age, um, it's uh, what what mom, you, my mom says said to me. We put you on that school so you would get in contact with people who are not like you and you have to live with most of the time to learn with it. But I don't know exactly because my school thing was very, very uh, difficult and very long term. But the most important thing is to put them in an environment or uh, get them with kids there that are the same, that they that he feels understand it and they can uh, exchange information and exchange your feelings. So I think that's the, the best Mm. Uh, in the info that I can give. Georgina, I, sorry, okay. Gina, I'm just going to say to Georgina, I've, I've, I've got a lot of experience with this now, having an 11 year old son that's been the same since he was, you know, really about 18 months old. And I'd be more than happy to share my experience with you. So I'm just going to drop the uh, help at the time of the six son.com email address there. And if you want to just, I answer every email that comes into that. So if you want to ping an email, to me, I'm more than happy to uh, jump on a Zoom with you and just share some of the experiences because I know how lonely that journey can be. So I'm really happy to do that. And also um, next week or in a few days time in the um, movie group page, we will share a link for a Facebook page with uh, CK so you can also speak with him. But we'll do that in a few days time. So, um, you missed hanging out with your friends, CK, and uh, since you've been homeschooled, which leads to more feeling isolated. And so you started, I think, with your mum, a project called Out of Your Mind, Out of Your yes. Mind Project. So right now, it's, project. right now it's on hold because of lockdown. But when that clears, hopefully you're going to, are you going to continue with it? Yes, we're going to 100% continue with it. We're uh, planning on making a website. And we're planning on really starting up and uh, starting to get very involved in this project. Because so what are the... There are... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the most important thing is to, uh, that the most important direction we want to go in is to create an environment where kids can come in and from uh, the ages be anywhere from 10 and 18, really that age group to really uh, talk with them and try to understand themselves better. And even if they know already a lot of them, maybe they can learn from the others and help the others to understand them themselves and how to live in this world right now and how we could change that for the better. But yeah, it's a project where we're very passionate about and what I, uh, I me and my mom uh, are trying to set up right now. I think it's a brilliant idea. Can you tell us what your four questions are when people want to join? Uh, what your four key questions? I can tell. I can tell if you can't remember. I can't remember because we okay. did those questions in ten All right. minutes. So I, yeah. So you, I'll say them and you comment on it. So um, the questions that CK asks is: Do you think your brain works differently? Do you feel things that your environment doesn't, but you don't dare share with anyone? Do you believe that you can be you can do more things than you've ever been taught yourself? And do you really think you are the only one? Mm -hmm. I think those are great questions. Yes, we really thought about them, and I really wanted to. Uh, I really, really brains up with my mom. Like, how could we try to engage kids like my age to get them to to talk and and talk about their things? Because if you have nobody to talk to, it's a very sensitive. Pro uh, 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 it's called sensitive um, emotion and sensitive uh, a topic that's difficult to talk about for some kids. And yeah. maybe as soon as they get into that circle and you have a standard group that, as I told, that energy starts to mix in together and you can have a beautiful uh, a harmony and beautiful group uh, feeling. So you don't know you, so you know you don't feel alone. And these yeah. questions try to help to... Uh, not identify, but to try to find these people around the, uh, the the country and around the globe to come together and 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 really speak of what's really going on with our generation and what's going on with us and what what's going to happen with us and what's our future and that. In this That's world. 
fantastic project. Mm. So presumably on your Facebook page, you will be talking about those things and people who've got kids who want to talk, you can engage. It's fantastic. And, um, you know, a lot of kids who have shown these sort of qualities but also have been misunderstood and isolated, um, that society's way, way to respond is been to label the kids, ADHD, whatever, on the spectrum, and then medicate them, the Ritalin generation. How does that make you feel? Do you feel angry about it or do you feel driven to change it? For me, I'm very driven to change this, and I don't feel I don't feel uh, I don't I'm angry at those people because they just don't know that it exists, and these people are coming and putting a label on something is like just taking a quick look at something and giving it a rating from one to ten. But mm. but we're people; we change, <laughs> we talk different. Our brains develop over time, and even if you're adult, you still can learn so much. From yourself or from others and these people who do this they're just not a consciousness of that these things are happening and if you're getting medicated that can have on a high sensitive child can have a huge impact on what their life will be and how they act as an adult and then you can get into very dangerous areas like addiction and 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 all these very uh dangerous things that are not good for your for you and your person around you because even though you think you're alone and you're standing alone in everything there's always somebody who loves you and and always it is there for you to take care of you no matter what situation you are and i really i really know this because i talk from experience of a lot of lot of times and a lot of years of this feeling and knowing that there is still somebody or there is somebody there for you no matter who you are or what you have done, you are always welcome in somebody's arms and somebody's home to talk. Mm. That's really beautiful thing to say, CK. Really beautiful. And um, talking about labels, you know, we talk about Generation X, Y, Z, Alpha, Millennials, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then there's also a sort of new age aspect to that, which is the, the um, Indigo kids who were the system busters if you like many mm -hmm. years ago the crystal children who have been diagnosed greatly as on being on the spectrum but for me it was the rainbow kids that really uh if you identify at all because they're thought to be highly developed intellectually emotionally and spiritually and very highly active energized expressive that seems to me that that's a category that would describe you and would describe young Teo. Yes. Um, does that resonate with you, that description? That, that's or do you try really to resonate. stay away? Yeah. That, that's, that's so important that these children are born, and that these children are educated on how they work and the gifts they have, because we are the one who eventually have to change the world for the next generations to come and for the, the, the generations that are going to be living on this planet and profiting from this because our planet right now is in chaos and it's ruins. It's very sad for me to see that all the things are happening. And I always have that hope and that, that power of knowing that kids like me, kids like Teo, kids that I'm now uh, working with and talking to, that those are going to be the ones who are going to change this world again and bring it the world up to a new level to more understanding, more loving, and to a step closer to peace, love, and happiness all around the world and understanding for each other. So yeah, I can picture me in that category, yeah. Yeah. I hope parents, teachers, officials, I hope people are really listening and uh, we can take this conversation another time. Maybe you have you back, Hemwell, CK. That would be but it's 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 a conversation that should have happened a long long time ago yes. and, mm. and you're absolutely right so do you get inspired uh do you have ideas um about ways that we can do you see solutions in your mind about what is does something seem very clear to you that to our generation it's not so clear it's cloudy mm, that no matter what a person does or what a person, how he reacts, just 
because what I feel like a lot of people do, and also adult people, because they grew up in a certain kind of uh, perspective of the world, that they sometimes judge too quickly, and they don't look at what's really lying behind it. And that's what I'm trying to learn and teach myself, that no matter who the person is, I don't look at their experience, I don't look at how they think, I don't see, I don't, I don't hear what they're speaking, I just want to talk to them first and see what's behind all of this, behind this person, to understand who they are. And if you have understanding for somebody, and they feel understood, they feel loved, and when you have love, that creates happiness. And if somebody is happy, they can do the same thing for somebody else. And that's how we can break this chain of, of negative energy and uh, this judgmental world we, we, that we are living in right now, that we can create happiness, love, and an understanding for each other, because that's so important for this generation and so important for this world that's really needed. Mm. I'm feeling quite emotional listening. I really am. It's just beautiful. Thank Sorry. you very much. Thank Sorry. You. It's also what we were talking to Antar the other week, and Antar was saying it's so important that when you do speak to somebody um, that that you 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 try to look underneath what they're saying. So you know, if you if you hear the story or you hear the rhetoric, try to understand what's underneath that, what's actually what's actually going on. And it also said I, I read the most beautiful thing years ago in a business book that said every person you meet, treat them like they are the most important person in the world. You know, whether it, whether it be the person that's cleaning the toilets in a in a in a bar or a pub, or whether it's you know the person that is your most esteemed teacher, it's just you treat everybody the same, treat everybody with respect because everybody has their own story, and everybody has their own stuff going on in their life, and nobody's walking in their shoes at that moment in time to know what's happening, and uh, and it sounds what you just said there is incredibly wise words from a. 16 year old because just amazing amazing it's thank you so, very much it's been so beautiful to have you on and to to you know to really as to get an understanding of, of of how you see the world and how so many young adults and young people are seeing the world very differently from the way that uh, that 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 we see it through the conditioned eyes of an education system that potentially was not the right thing for either any of us <laughs> yes it's 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 very sometimes very sad what's happening and what's what's happening to some of these children because I have also a few people that I know who have not had this understanding and they fall into a very dark place and with very dark uh, uh, people who do not treat uh, uh, humans like humans and I always love to say that's my favorite thing to say to people if you strip a if you uh, get rid of the clothes of the status of a person, the only thing you see is a human. And that's what everybody should or could do to mm. help this world to a better place and also help to understand the persons you are surrounded by and the persons that, uh, and those persons will always understand you because they feel understood. So they'll try to understand you too. So that's trying what's, what's really needed in this world at the moment. Mm. Beautiful. So um, telepathy and uh, telekinetics, do you ever play around with those sort of things? For example, do you and your friends, we, we all to an extent think of someone and then the phone goes and it's that person. But yes. on a more advanced level, do you play with tele telepathy with your friends, for example? Do you have anyone you can do that with? I do not do this with my friends because the, the friends that I have are not uh, uh, consciousness of that they can do this and they don't are very uh con they don't know that they have that ability yet and it's um I'm, I'm sometimes i'm waiting for a friend to say certain things that i can help them to get to the next upper levels of understanding what they are and what they have but so far the only one who i uh start developing this with is my mom yeah. uh megan sometimes and my teacher ricardo where i have also we're talking or we're having uh having this conversation and we're making at the table, we're having uh, lunch the, this afternoon and we were speaking and some girl was like saying like, oh, what I have to put on for the scene. And we all sat at the same time close. And I was the <laughs> thing ever that happens so often or that we're sitting on the couch on the mom or watching a movie and I just look at my mom 
and I start thinking, oh, I would like popcorn. And my mom says, should I go make some? So it's that really <laughs> yeah. intimate connection of just knowing. And sometimes people just sit on the couch and like, what's just happened? Like, <laughs> you're just confused, like, oh my God. Okay, that's weird. But then we'll have to explain like, oh yeah, this, this, and this, and this, how it happens. How about my friends? I uh, uh, can't do that yet. And I don't want to, because I first want to know what's my energy and what's energy of somebody else of the things surrounding me because I don't want to uh, do any give anybody wrong signals or put on the wrong energy towards somebody because I don't want to hurt anybody or make, make sure that they don't get confused or feel a certain way. So well, I, what I hope is that this conversation is going to bring you many new friends who are going to elevate the conversation so that you end up with lots of fantastic elevated playmates. <laughs> <laughs> That would be very fun because I have I a, lot of, a lot more to tell and a lot of yep. lot of things I, I can uh, give people advice to because I love helping people. And I when I see somebody who is very sad or don't know what's happening, I always go to that person, no matter what it is. Maybe I'm walking the dog and I see somebody sitting on a bench. I try to go up to them and talk to them. And sometimes that really helps that person and they start... Uh, uh, they start out sad, and as soon as we stop talking, they leave out smiling and with a better part of themselves and a happier day ahead of them. And I really love this, and I really want to spread more of that and really give people that feeling of, oh, I'm not, I'm not so alone as I thought, and I have somebody I can talk to, and I can have somebody who actually understands me finally. So yeah, yeah that's 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 what I'm I'm hoping to give out to anybody watching and to also children my age or children who are uh, uh, younger or older that they understand what's what's uh, what's doing, what's going on and that they feel understand and loved. And that's just the best thing in the world yeah. to feel love and feel happy because that's how we create a better world for mm. everybody. Just be kind and respect each other, brothers yeah. and sisters. Do you have any spirit guides that you're aware of or you work with? I... I definitely know that there are uh, that there are guides. I cannot communicate yet with them. I cannot yes. really. I can feel them around me at times when I feel sad or I have a problem. Uh, one of those is actually my grandfather, my mm -hmm. Frederick, who was also a high sensitive, a high intellectual, a high developed person, and he unfortunately died uh, before I could be born and when my mother was very young. But sometimes I'm sitting and I'm struggling with something. Am I? Dad, or my uh, father, or my grandfather was a mechanic. He worked on cars. And last summer, I was working on a scooter to fix it because it was standing so long still, and I wanted to fix it. And I couldn't get out of the problem. And then I just went and I concentrated and I connected me to the, the to the above and into the ground with my energy. And I asked, "Hey, grandfather, could you please help me with this? I need your help." And after just ten seconds of just asking, I started working. And as soon as I did it, I got an idea to get the bolt loose and continue working. So that's one experience I had, and the uh, the I I feel and know there are more around me and more helping me and guiding me on my way than I'm walking, because sometimes it's a very heavy cross and a very heavy thing to carry, and I feel them, but I cannot completely communicate with them. But I'm on my way to learning that and uh, yeah. gaining that ability. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited with the head. Just a little yeah. notice: it could be that I'm going to fall off because the battery of the laptop is low so it could be that i'm switching over to my phone when it gets when it says uh 10 if that happens switch over to your phone and we'll just do yeah. the last few questions that come in um i mean i've still got loads of questions <laughs> it's I always... right. CK, um, we had an amazing speaker talking to us about ancestors and about, and about how the ability that we all have to call in our ancestral yes. line and it was after I, I heard that in the film and then I started to think about ancestors. And if you have, I've said, I've shared this a long time ago, but not for, a lot, not for a while on these live broadcasts. But if you have, you know, if you have two biological parents, that means you have four grandparents, which means you have eight great grandparents, which means you have 16 great, great grandparents, which means you have 32 great, great, great grandparents. And if you go back, you know, sort of like seven generations, you have like over 256 people standing behind you. And it's and it's that they you can call them in at any point to ask you for help in those moments of just, oh, what do I do now? You just say, oh, no, oh, please, ancestors, help me. Because actually, 
what what a few of the um the native um indigenous that we've spoken to said that they want to come in and help but you that you have to ask for their help because you know otherwise it's there it's the ethereal interference in in your in your earth walk as your koala would call it so it's beautiful that you feel that with your grandfather but yeah you've got a you've got a much bigger army than that behind you you can call in yes. you can call in everybody and what i learned is don't be afraid to ask for help because i'm somebody who really wants to learn things by myself and do it by myself but sometimes you just can't and i'm very sometimes annoyed by this sometimes even today but yeah. i i started to learn to ask um, uh, the angels and 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 the, the ancestors of mine to please help me in what I'm doing and please guide me or help me see the way that I'm gonna have to walk and let me help me walk that way to get to my eventual goal. That's gonna be my purpose and understand anything that's surrounding me and anything that I'm doing. So I know that I'm doing it good and I'm doing it truthfully and honored and, and humble towards everybody who is walking with me that way and I'm meeting and greeting throughout that way that I'm walking. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you want to bring someone in, Teo, at this point, or if you have any questions. Otherwise, I was going to ask um, CK the last, the four questions that I asked all of our adult speakers. So whilst he's doing that, um, if you had one minute with the leaders of the world, imagine they're all listening to you, CK, what would your message be? What would you say to them? My message would be to don't, try to solve everything with don't, don't try to solve everything don't try to push everything to their limits let people and children experience what you're doing try to spread love awareness and and understanding among the people and give people chances to be their best for themselves and not care about so much what's happening around them but really go focus on themselves and make sure they're stable before you can help and that's what Jesus said. First, you have to take your own splinter out of your eye before you can help your neighbor who has a nail stuck in his in his hand. And that's what what I'm trying, what I wanted to give to everybody to give love, understanding, and happiness towards people who need it, and towards who people who because everybody needs have understanding, love, and happiness. Because if you have these three components in your life, it makes it so much easier to understand and and understand other people and help them feel loved understand and happy oh okay i'll have to switch to my phone right now because okay. my the battery is almost dead okay so, well, come back as soon as you can so Teo, oh you can still be there yeah i'm just i'm just i can immediately switch as soon as i uh, have the email ready hi Teo. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll uh, leave studio and I'll join through my phone real quick. Okay. So while um, CK is joining us on his phone, what, what did you think, Teo? What did you think watching so far? A totally bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I definitely, I can relate to most of it. Yeah. I bet you can. We're going to bring CK back in here. Let's drop your Luna out and bring that back in. There we go. Oh, no. Hello. Yeah, go on. Hello, that should that should do it. Maybe you can turn it so people can see me better. No, it's good. No, As you were, that's good. I'll I'll hold it up here. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. Say hi, Tara. How are you doing? Hello. I'm Hello. Doing well. oh, very nice. Very nice. Good. Yeah. You got a question for CK? Not particularly. I was more thinking that, you, like, last time I was on, like, about with uh, Matt McCartney. Was it Matt McCartney? Yeah, and Yukwala. Yukwala. Um, you, you were asking me questions and I was answering them. And then, um, and then, yeah. What's it so, like? I was going to ask you a question. What's uh, it like when you, because you are ambidextrous. Yeah. So you, you, you kick with your right foot, you write with your right hand, but you play tennis with your left hand. Yeah. And 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 CK was saying about how his brain works and how he pictures things. When, when, really? When you think about things, how do you how do you picture it? Well, if I'm picking something up, like I I like riding a scooter, so mm -hmm. and bikes, 
but you have, like, you have a forward foot, which means when you stop pedaling, yes. you have a foot you naturally have forward in, and the front. Yeah. Um, it's because on a scooter, I push with my weight. I just, I'm really bad with left and right and all of that. Uh, no problem. Take the it's very hard to determine left and right because most people would think, which hand do you pick up a pen with? But it's a lot more complicated than that for me. Yes, so it, it, it's, it I is. That and that. Sometimes, if I'm drawing, I'll draw, I'll do details with my left hand, and then I'll do like at the actual sketching and drawing with my right hand. So, I have kind of the same thing, yes. Yeah, and um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> That's another thing. I forgot what I'm going to say very often. Mm -hmm. Right, you're quite. You've, you've, we didn't warn Teo about this whatsoever. No. So this is quite a pressured environment for him just to step in front of a camera and start to chat. Listen, listen. listen. Well, if I have a little listen, I'm going to ask um, CK another question. Yeah. And if you're, if the question comes to you, then you can ask it after. So um, we were finishing on the four questions, and you yes. just answered beautifully. What would you say to the leaders of the world? Yeah. So what would you say, um, CK, to the media about how they report? To the media. To the media is, this, is also you go to a conflict and you try to push to get information out and you go and immediately judge and all the people are there and immediately put people in boxes and in labels which is not going to work for our generation because we do not roll like this. And also for all the people who also do not like being put with marks and, 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 and stickers because it's not how we feel. We want to understand that we want to see for ourselves what's going on and just observe and not immediately make conclusions of this one's the bad guy and that one. Because in some cases, there's so much deeper meaning behind this without you even knowing it and you immediately impulse for firing questions and, and, and opinions upon people who even do not know that they are saying these things or they didn't step back and observe that situation. So that's what I'm trying to say to the media. Try to be more optimistic about what's everything going on in this world because what people see is what often what they believe, and they normally do not always think for themselves before acting yeah. with fire impulses. So if you try to be more optimistic about what's going on, people also become a little bit more optimistic in their own lives and in their own opinions and their own things they say, and that's very important for our new generation. Yeah, so more conscious media, both in the press, and how do you, your generation, how do you guys keep up with media and the news? What do you go to? So we normally have Instagram, YouTube, yeah. Google. Uh, I don't use Facebook that much, but these are the most informative things. But sometimes I always watch very often the news with my mother. We always watch the news around the same time. And sometimes I join and I see the press. And what they say, they fire impulse opinions a lot of the times. Yeah. And what I'm always thinking, like, wh wh why would they do this? Go and ask them actually why and let them think for a second what they're actually doing and saying. And that's how I always view the information that I'm getting. I always go very deep into what topic I'm talking about before we'll, uh, before that. Uh, for example, right now, the Black Lives Matter movement, what's going on in the world. I did not immediately go and say, oh, oh cops are bad, because that's not true. No. Because there are a lot of good people out there. But just because a few mass did something doesn't mean the others are bad. It's still horrible what happens, and it's not right. But step back and observe and try to get as much information to get the most honest and most informative information so you can understand the situation better and learn that quickly, quickly so when the new situation like this comes up, and that's maybe from life importance or something daily in your life, you can quickly, uh, quicker act on these actions with a good intent and a good feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. That's how I get my media. I don't know about anybody else because I haven't actually talked about that. It's, yeah. I'll try to do that more because that's a very yeah, yeah. interesting question. Conscious media. What have you got to say, young Teo? 
our local skate park about what he was saying about Black Lives Matter. Rec about um, I bet it was about two months ago. There was a boy, and there were in different cases there were two girls and a group of people from East Grinstead because we have a Forest Road skate park. They usually arrive East Grinstead skate park. You know, they're for kid. They're I don't know twelve miles apart. Is that right? Yeah. The towns are twelve miles apart, and somehow the kids at our skate park at Forest Row found out ways to make insulting names about the kids at Squinstead just because they're in a different village. Mm. Yes. And that's, that's not very helpful, is it? No, <laughs> that's not very helpful. And that's the part of understanding. And if you look at kids that they don't think that because they're, they're just kids. But and these insults, they hurt other people. And just and then, because you're different yeah. doesn't mean... Or the other one is different. Doesn't mean that you're any, yeah. any, any, any different. You're just a human. You're a, you're a person with feelings, and you can experience those feelings, and everybody can. So yeah, that's it's 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 it's, it's sad what happens a lot of the time. Yeah, as they call it, a ricochet effect. And then what happened is, two girls were playing and just sitting at the top with their dolls, playing with their little doll skateboards, and these kids. I'm not gonna like to say exactly what. They were going up and saying really, really, like, properly not very nice things. Just right, like, in trains, which is where you just follow each other in a long train, just going around and circling, circling these girls, saying some really, really, really rude stuff. Yes. And that's, and that's sad what happens. But it's like, because what kids normally do is when there's one doing something, they follow that. Yeah. And... Um, it's like what you said, a ricochet effect. You only have to push one domino to get let the whole ray fall down. Yeah. And but you there's, and there's there's what what can also happen is that there's a really, really nice person. This happened at me at countless festivals that I've made really, really good friends with these kids that certain kids are being very un not nice to other kids, and then really nice, really good kids join them and start being horrible just because there's a majority being horrible. And I've, I, because yes. like, as an example, there was a kid who being really mean to me, a gate, not letting me go through the gate. And um, this is at a festival called Wazinga, which is, um, and I went up to just the nearest person, the nearest adult and said, there's a boy on that gate over there and he's being really mean to me and not letting me go through the gate and he's being really mean. And there are about 500 people in the festival. I managed to find the one person that was his mum. <laughs> <laughs> and his mum just said, uh, called him over and just said, what's happening? And he said, all these kids are being really mean and I don't want them to be mean to me, so I'm doing this. And by the end of the festival, he was one of them, pretty much he was the, one of the people I liked the most in the whole festival. So you think yes. it's group dynamics that children yeah. behave badly because they don't want to be shown up in front of if, other children? Even I do it. Okay. I do it. So should we give the last word, because we're coming up to half past, should we give the last word to CK? Because my last question, well, I've got two. The last question, but one, is what would you say to the children of the world? And I think Teo has introduced the topic perfectly. Yeah. What would your advice be to children of the world? To children of the world, I advise you to try to be as, not as humble, but try to be humble and don't be afraid to ask anybody or ask an adult or ask your friends for understanding or, for, or, or just ask them questions for, why are you doing this? Because sometimes there's more behind the mask than there's in front. And a lot of people put on a mask because they don't want to get hurt. And when you get older, that mask starts to thicken. And then you start to lose grip on reality, what's real and what's fake. Yeah. And you just walk with the, with, the, with the people and you don't stand as an individual strong. Because if you stay strong as an individual, people will start to look up at you. And you start to look, hey, he did that, that. I can do that too. And there's a fun story that's uh, amazing that I heard. There was a certain amount of uh, time you could do within 100 yards, and nobody could run. I think it was like four minutes. I don't know exactly. And nobody knew how, how could this happen. And there was one guy 
who said, I'm going to break this. I'm going to do this. And everybody said, no, you're crazy. You can't do this. He broke it. And after that, hundreds of people started breaking it. The average time, what was normally thought to be impossible, became possible. Just because one person did something, the others started to follow. And if that one person did something good... It was the four-minute mile. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And so coming into the last question, what is your vision of the future? My vision for the future is that there is going to be a world where people are more understanding, where people are more connected, more in groups, and invite other people who are not having this to come and sit with them and talk and have like a cup of coffee or a cup of tea over it so they understand them and they feel loved and, and understood and they feel happy uh, about who they are and that they know, okay, I am actually something worth because if you don't feel like, if you, if you feel worthless and somebody invites you to come sit with a group of children and you start speaking, you have clicks with certain persons, those people can become your best friends and yeah. that can be in a very short amount of time. And yeah. that's what my vision is, that there's going to be more love, more happiness, and more connection between people and between our generation, Theo, us together, and our, all our children, all our uh, uh, young adults and young children who have this passion, who have these things, so they feel loved and understood, and we can create a better world for us, but also for our children and those children afterwards, and also for our parents and all for our elders, that they also feel this uh, sensation of love and understanding. So yes, yeah. that's my my, yeah. my future and my hopes for the future that I'm going to work on very hard for the next couple of months and the, the next couple of years to come. The last thing I was going to say was, was just before we end it, there needs to be a slight balance between it because if you're always the odd one out, the one that always says, I can do this, I can do this, then you want, want you get caught out once, and from then on, everyone is just expecting you to do the stuff that then you can't do, and then you push yourself too hard, and you end up hurting yourself or embarrassing yourself. That what happened to me because no, I learned this the hard way, mm. and what I've learned is that no matter how hard I push, I can push as hard as I want. But if I know that that mountain is not going to move today, it might move tomorrow. And if it doesn't move tomorrow, it will move another day. But it's always worth to keep trying and keep trusting yourself. Okay, I can do this. And if you cannot do it, don't worry about it because it won't run away. Because a mountain won't move it's on its own. And a mountain won't move or run away. So if you have problems or things that are laying on your heart or you don't feel good about and you can't solve them right now, just let them down. Just sit back, be observant, look at what other people are doing, and then come back to yours. Because maybe in the time you're looking and observing things, you'll be more understanding of your situation, and you can get out of the situation way quicker without hurting or without embarrassing yourself before having uh, uh, these uh, uh, things that you don't want to do with them anymore because they hurt you so much. Because no matter what you do, if you do it with a good intent, with love and happiness and joy and passion, there will always be a good time to do it. And if it doesn't work, you can always do it later. Yeah. CK, you have been an absolute pleasure. Such a Thank pleasure. Thank you very to much. To you. I was. I'm very honored to be uh, be on this uh, be on this web seminar and be a part of this bigger image. I'm I'm very humbled and I'm very honored. That I can be here. I'm I'm very happy about this, and I'm very glad that I got this beautiful opportunity with you guys and the so community. Well. Thank you very, thank you very much. We've <laughs> had a very good um, baseline understanding, and when we maybe get you back on the show, we'll we'll play with it and take it sky high. I'm looking forward to doing that. That's, and I'm looking that's, forward that's, to joining so your good. Facebook group as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be working on that right after we yeah, uh, after I get back. So, so Taya, Thank you, you again. Just, you stay with us, yeah? Taya, any closing thoughts, my lovely? There's just so many people saying thank you to you. I've flashed some of them up. So your aunt says, you couldn't have said this more beautiful as you just did. John and Trixie send their love. Susan says, I love this so much. 
Huren says, thank you for sharing these beautiful, uplifting broadcasts. It helps to keep our energy high, which is so hard, especially now. Uh, amazing Quattro. That means four of us. Here. That's you as well, buddy. Um, amazing. And um, here we go. Uh, not all doors will open, only the ones that will serve you. Hey, says Bob, who's watching us at four o'clock in the morning from Australia. Uh, lovely, lovely. CK, we are very proud. Thank you for making a better world. I think that must be your friend, Roel. Um, that's my uncle, actually. That's your uncle. There you go. Yes. Danielle, who's also in Holland, says, thank you, CK. Thank you, young Teo. There's so, and there's so many people writing to say thank you. And, I'm uh, very moved by this. I almost started crying because yes. I love that people come together and finally hear our voices of the new generation and they yeah. understand. And I really feel moved by this. I, I cannot thank you guys enough and the one guy, the people watching. I love you all so very much and thank you that you have been watching and listening to me. I'm very, thank very honored. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I thank you, Tio, for talking to me because I love, I really, I love you guys. I love all of you. <laughs> yeah. So everyone, if you want to get in touch with uh, CK or ask questions uh, in a few days time, we'll put up on our Facebook page um, some contact details for him and the Facebook page he has. Um, Bless you, bless you, bless you. You can comment on our Facebook page about this talk under this interview. And um, it's available to watch for free anytime on our YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash time of the sixth sun. Uh, and you can watch any of our interviews. So thank you, everyone. You're going to stay with us for a moment, Camuel and everyone yes. else. Thank you so much for joining us. I just this has been my favorite interview. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. And we'll see you on Thursday. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye.